Hello there. Happy holidays. Welcome to another Wine Steward video. It's coming. The big day. It's still November, but boy, it feels like December, especially when I walk outside in the morning. It is cold out there. It gets me in the mood for nummy num things like this, which we will describe in just a second. But first, I need some liquid motivation here. Oh, that smells nice. This is a wine that's close to my heart. Right now it's close to my nose, and... Uh, it's the last thing I'm going to tell you about in this three hour long video. No, it won't go that long, I promise. But there is a lot to tell you. Why are we doing a video on a Wednesday and not a Thursday or Friday as we often do? Because I've got to get up sinfully early tomorrow morning and build about 60 of these. And they will be wrapped and beautifully uh, tied with a bow. And uh, I am very grateful to the customer who's ordering all of those gift baskets for his crew. And we can do it for you. As soon as I'm through with his, I'll build you some. How about that? So that's what we do this time of the year. We do so many different things to make your holiday work. And one of those things is, in fact, what is in front of us here. This nummy num thing called Sandman 20-year Tawny Port. We ran out over the weekend, some of you despaired, <laughs> and we said, it's all right. We wrote about it in our, our uh, email newsletter, knowing that we would be able to get more. We wanted to cause a bit of a stir. There's nothing like running out of something to sell something, <laughs> like deprivation really sells. And so you who panicked, it's back on the shelf. I brought in three of these six packs. This should get us through the weekend. I don't know. <laughs> we have some orders to fulfill. Some people like said, Save me one, save me two, and so on. Because they read about my strong feelings about this beautiful port from here. Probably can't see that, but this is the riverbank, part of the riverbank called Villanova de Gaia, which is a municipality or a, a section of the better known city of Porto in northern Portugal. And Porto is a beautiful place to visit. It's a wonderful old city, very walkable, and you can walk across bridges to this riverbank on the south side of the river to Villanova de Gaia and visit one or several different port houses there. And when you're eating dinner back in Porto at night and looking across and all the lights come on and the, the billboard-sized signs advertising the different port houses are lit up, you see Dow and Taylor and Sandeman. This year, we're focusing on this, at least for the 20-year tawny category. Now, port comes in ruby, and it comes in tawny. When you walk in the door and say, I need to buy a port, first we ask you what kind of price you have in mind, and then we ask you, what style are we talking about, ruby or tawny? And sometimes eyes roll back in the head, and we have to explain the difference. Tawny ports, a la this, see the color? That's not ruby, is it? No, you can tell even by the color. It is tawny. Tawny ports are deliberately oxidized by staying in an oxidative uh, atmosphere or environment for uh, longer than just a year and a half. Ruby ports are quickly sealed up and they keep their red color for virtually ever. And they get a little brickish over time, but they are meant to be, uh, those rubies, red in color and to go beautifully with chocolate. And uh, these tawny ports instead do wonderfully with creme brulee or they are dessert in and of themselves. And what I often do instead of drinking tawny with a sweet dessert is to react to it with uh, salty nuts and um, a uh, perhaps a very strong cheese like a gorgonzola, something like that, blue cheese or a, a greenish cheese like gorgonzola. It's just, it's a remarkable coming together of sensations in your mouth when you have tawny port with savory things like that. Tawny port comes in different quality levels. There is the basic tawny that might be 15 bucks. There is 10 year old tawny, which nowadays is going over $30 a bottle. I taste those from one producer several times, like somebody will walk in with a whole bag, the whole lineup from Dow and Graham and so on. Invariably, when we get to the 20 year tawny, that's where I am writing more and I am enjoying myself more with that smell in my nose and taste in my mouth. The 20 year port is what kills it. Let's say those guys also brought a 30 year and a 40 year. They cost more, they're not as good. Even at, if they were the same price as a 20 year tawny, 
I'm not as excited. This is where it hits. This is the sweet spot for Tawny Port for me and for many of you from what I've heard. And many of the vendors say, yeah, it's the 20. Why spend more? So this 20 year Tawny from Tawny is from Tawny from Sandman is who we're working with uh, emphatically this holiday season. Beautiful bottle, classic label, and it is good stuff. We're gonna keep bringing it in as long as they uh, don't run out on us, all right? So keep that in mind, beautiful Tawny. Back on the shelf. Let's redo the set. This is the time of the year when I am drinking a lot of coffee. And so the stack of coffee cups per video throughout December will be growing. It's kind of fun because at New Year's we knock them all off. And that's kind of our to hell with 2023 kind of statement. Um, but let's tell you that you have one more day. One more day to uh, enjoy the free opportunity, uh, this is not free, but the opportunity to have it engraved, have it personalized is free. This is distinctive. This is rare. This is one barrel. This represents one barrel. It's single barrel whiskey from Starward. And we are among the very, very few to be able to access some of it. We're getting about five cases of it. And only a couple of other accounts are getting in on this particular barrel that we tasted and said, boom, that's the one we want to represent to you. So it's distinctive that way. It's very, very good and rare. What can make it even rarer and more important as a gift is if you have it engraved. Why don't you say, Merry Christmas, Bob, or uh, Happy Birthday, Jane, or <laughs> this is for me. <laughs> this is... This is mine, don't touch it. How about that? <laughs> My whiskey, get away. Uh, this is Starward Single Barrel Whiskey that, yes, we can have engraved for you. We're gonna have this done here in the store on Friday afternoon. In other words, I need your order now to be able to obtain a bottle of this or several and uh, for you to provide us also with the messages you would like. Two lines maximum, 12 characters per line maximum, all right? I'm gonna spell this out one more time in an email that will come out with this video. So the details will be there. You can also go onto thewinesteward.com and order this uh, to be engraved. Again, it has to happen no later than tomorrow in order to be actually uh, engraved on Friday. How about that? Okay, Starboard Whiskey, single barrel, good stuff for you whiskey lovers or for the whiskey lover in your life. <laughs> and uh, now let us Move on to another topic because there's so much to say during the holidays, isn't there? Boom. Chateauneuf de Pop. We are taking this to a three bottle event. In other words, we are pouring no fewer than 15 different beautiful wines at our annual Chateauneuf de Pop event this Sunday, beginning at 5 p.m. up here on the mezzanine. We'll close the wine bar a little early, reset the room, and uh, provide your seat as long as you're able to still grab one but three bottles instead of two. In other words, we are admitting about 40 of you rather than the usual 28 uh, because so many people want to come to this event. We are nearly full. I believe at last count, we had six seats available remaining for this Sunday's event. You can go to thewinesteward.com and claim your seat. I also highly recommend you order some food. I will be baking bread for this, but more food would be good in order to survive 15 uh, tastes of beautiful wines from the Rhone Valley, including about eight or nine different Chateauneuf de Pops. We're also going to do Gigandas. We'll do a white Chateauneuf de Pop or two, and so on. But we're going to immerse ourselves in the Rhone Valley of France this Sunday. Once again, I cannot wait. It's going to be good. This wine will be enjoyed. The newest vintage released of Pego. One of the first impressions of Chateauneuf de Pop I ever had was the 1998 Pego when I was just getting into the subject. And this place, it is really lovely wine. And uh, we'll have it and several others. Six seats left. Let's tell you quickly about what's going on at the wine bar this weekend. The wine bar menu has been generated. You know, it changes every week. We do a white flight, we do a red flight, we do sparkling by the glass and so on. I'm not gonna tell you about all the wines this time because there's so much going on here, but let's tell you about a few of them. In the white flight, we are gonna pour the partner wine to a wine that we showed maybe two weeks ago. This is from a producer named V-Ray. I don't know if that's how you say it because I don't speak Catalan and that is the language, a certain version thereof, on the island of Mallorca. Mallorca, Spain, one of the Balearic islands is the source for this wine made entirely of the Prensal grape. Prensal, never heard of it, neither had I, but apparently it is the most planted white grape on the island of Mallorca and it is featured beautifully here. Beautiful, delicate floral qualities. The wine is bone dry, refreshing, good wine. So try a 
A white wine from Mallorca, all right? How about this, Griner Veltliner? There it is, I think I said that right, Griner Veltliner. And it is, uh, once again, on the wine bar. You guys love this stuff. You've come to know, <laughs> you've come to enjoy pronouncing the name and uh, every Gruner you have, calling up, you enjoy. And uh, this is from Domain Bacau, up in the Bacau region of Austria, and they are one of the best. And uh, you can prove that to yourself by enjoying it this wine bar weekend. How about that? Runner Veltliner. Now there are three other whites. I'm not going to go all the way into that in the wine bar white flight. Let's just tell you that we are once again pouring Tony and Jen's wine. They live about a mile and a half east of me as the crow flies in Livermore. This wine uh, is a alternative, a, an exception to their rule. They grow most of the fruit for their wine right there in Livermore. They buy some from their next door neighbor and they are what I would call a Livermore Rhone house. So they're working with Syrah, Grenache, and uh, making GSMs and also varietals out of the Rhone family. Well, they know people like Cab too. So here is the Cabernet from Madison Vineyards and they access in this instance, the fruit from the Napa Valley. You ever heard of it? <laughs> this is delicious Cabernet. We've wine clubbed it recently and uh, we love to show it by the glass up at the wine bar. Everybody seems to just like, like it. They like the local story and um, they love the wine itself. So. Lots of feel good here. All right, wine from friends of ours. A little bit about the red flight. The wine you're gonna start with is inexpensive Bordeaux, but man, it really hits the spot. It's gonna hit the spot again right now. I have a little bit of it here. This is Chateau de Blazac, 2018 Bordeaux. It's a right bank Bordeaux, therefore it is based on the Merlot grape. This one may in fact be 100% 100 Merlot, and that's why it's so dark and affable in, in texture. It's just right. I mean, this is winter wine. This is when you pull on a sweater, if not a tweed jacket, and enjoy a gloss of Bordeaux. And, you know, have a fire burning and uh, sit in a big chair, overstuffed chair, and present your, pretend you're, you're some stuffy old dude doing a, a wine video. You know, a <laughs> big glass of Bordeaux in your hand, right? Hmm. Inexpensive and good. This is solid stuff. It should cost 20 or 25 bucks. It doesn't. And it's the beginning of the red flight. We're going to... Skip ahead a couple of red wines and just tell you about this very ornately designed wine. This is from Sicily, Italy, and it's made entirely of the grape called Nero Diavola, as grown by Mother Nature, as made by human beings, as labeled by none other than the designer Versace. So that's why it looks so woo! And uh, it's a beautiful bottle of Nero Diavola. If you've never had one, you should try this one. Very interesting wine. It's good. Great food wine. Um, 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 boy, I think that's uh, about it for Wine Bar. You know, there's plenty more to talk about, but we have other things to talk about. Let's talk about this. Let's put a bottle of Muga, their higher-end wine. Bodegas Muga makes several beautiful Tempranillo-based wines and some other surprises at their place in Rioja, Spain, arguably the most famous wine region of Spain. We're going to be featuring, this is the commercial, <laughs> we're going to be featuring not one, but two different grape producers of Rioja at another event. After we get this Chat to Pop event over with, we are going to continue to sell seats if it isn't filled up already for our two great wineries in Rioja. Uh, I don't know even what to call it, but Bolegas Muga and La Rioja Alta will be featured. They will be represented by at least, at least six wines each, and it's gonna be good. It'll be a Rioja immersion. You're gonna be trying great things all the way up the quality scale. And I love these two producers, especially because they are a little bit different from each other in um, in philosophy and style. And so that's going to be the fun of the night, is comparing La Rioja Alta to Muga and so on. So just saying, there are seats available on the, our website, thewinesteward.com. I'm very, very gratified to see, like, every time I look at the screen, boop, there goes another seat, there goes two more, and so on. So it will fill. We're going to keep this to 28 people, so... Sign up soon. This is on uh, December 12th, I believe. It's a Tuesday evening, okay? Muga and La Rioja Alta. Yet another commercial for the fact that we do sell spirits. And even though we've only been in this game for about four months now, I'm keeping an eye on what is selling. What you come in and buy and what I need to repurchase you bought all the Limoncello I, I bought, so <laughs> we have just restocked. This is a, a quick announcement to say that Limoncello is back on the shelf. This beautiful wine made with lemons and 
uh, a little bit of hooch, uh, in Italy. It's the real stuff. This is sold to us by Angelino, by the way, the gentleman who was just here representing beautiful wines on our mezzanine and singing once in a while and strumming his guitar. Well, he also vends this, and this is gorgeous limoncello, apparently, because you keep buying it. So it's back, just saying. Hey, that was fast, right? Now, how about put the, let's just do that. Well, can't wait. Well, let's try this. Does that work? <laughs> this is a piece of cheese, and it is from uh, Sardinia, Italy. It is made, it is called a pecorino because it uses the uh, the milk of a sheep, a pecora. Uh, pecorino is sheep milk cheese, did you know? And this is aged, uh, so it's crumbly. It's very hard to slice. I would just like forget trying to slice it and kind of carve, you know, little rocks out of it and uh it's it's good that way and if you can tell from there whoa as i almost knocked things over it looks fairly marbleized or some there's something strange about it does it look like your marble counter at home <laughs> it is in fact uh, uh there are streaks of truffle in there black truffle is part of the game here so this nice hard cheese also has nuance of black truffle it is really really good I used it on a cheese platter on thanksgiving and <laughs> it disappeared fast that's my cheese advertisement. I'm going to tell you about one more thing. I told you I would tell you about what was going in, on in this glass. This wine that's close to my heart and once again close to my nose. And now, mm, it's this. Yeah, we haven't shut up about Beaujolais yet. Thanksgiving's over, but that doesn't mean you need to stop considering Beaujolais as one of the greatest food wines out there. Whether you have rotisserie chicken or grilled sausages, or haven't even had your turkey yet and you're doing that for Christmas, consider great Beaujolais. Not the Beaujolais Nouveau necessarily, but the good stuff. The good stuff that is named by the names of individual neighborhoods within Beaujolais. That's when it's better. We've already told you about the fact that Domaine des Colettes uh, is represented on our shelf with their Fleury, that's one neighborhood, moulin au that's another neighborhood, and Renier. So three different neighborhoods, which are all stone's throws within each other, uh, uh, I don't know if I said that right. But anyway, they're very close together. They're neighborhoods within this area of Beaujolais. Well, there's this other one. Morgon is perhaps currently the most hip neighborhood. Um, the prices are going up. The ones from Kermit Lynch are awesome, and they nowadays cost $35, if not over $40 per bottle these days. And we never used to think of Beaujolais that way, like it's a fine wine. This is a fine wine. It does not cost that much because it comes from a lesser known producer. Uh, there are fewer marketing dollars being spent on its behalf, and so you and I save money on a beautiful, beautiful Morgon. Morgon is made with Gamay, just like the rest of those Beaujolais. This is a great one for the mid-20s. I think it comes down to like two, twenty-two forty-nine for you wine club members who get 10% off of everything, all the wines you buy here. So great Beaujolais is the way to finish this off. I'm going off screen now to finish this off. Thank you so much. Happy Holidays. We will see you soon. Don't forget the engraving opportunity on that beautiful single barrel whiskey. All right, see you soon.